here's a or two deer bedded i don't have enough experience hunting in the snow to tell you how old that is but i can tell you if you look at the tracks they're definitely not running tracks so they weren't spooked out of this spot and something else i can tell you you see the the droppings there a deer wouldn't just if it was spooked it wouldn't stand up take a couple steps and uh and leave those droppings if they're spooked they're gonna run until they feel safe stop and then then poop so if you if you kill a deer um, and it's still full of urine still full of droppings you know that it was for the most part it was still bedded i mean it was bedded right before you shot it so just kind of a, a helpful tip there okay i'm gonna give you just a few hunting tips here if you care i feel like they make a difference so it snowed in arkansas and that's pretty rare so that's not something we get to hunt in all the time the deer aren't used to it um, it takes about three days of cold weather or three days of everything froze over before the deer really start moving since it doesn't snow here very much in arkansas um, the deer, if it just snows one day and gone the next, they'll just they'll just hole up, they'll they'll hibernate, they'll they'll just bed down and they'll just ride it out. But it's been cold enough, long enough now that the deer are out moving. It's still pretty nocturnal, so I'm just slipping from bedding area to bedding area, kind of like the hunting public do. I've learned a lot from them. You can learn a lot from them if you watch them. So I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. And it goes right along with what they what they say. So I'm playing the wind. Um, I'm glassing a bunch, and this is the one thing I want to show you. So I use the I have a glass pack. That's the the big harness thing. I'm not a, not in love with it, but I found out how to use it. Um, these binoculars have the covers for the lenses. I just took those off because I, I'm not climbing mountains it's kind of like i mean they're on a harness so putting the covers on them then putting them in the in the glass pack is kind of like putting on a helmet and a nascar suit to drive to church on sunday just like it's just not necessary so i'm leaving these these are vortex 10 by 50s i'm leaving them out every time i go over a little hill or depression like that right there i'm easing up behind the trees i'm stopping where it's shady i'm not stopping in the sun um and I'm glassing over. Okay, that's that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm trying to stay in this trail. Whenever I'm stepping in the snow, I mean, for us Arkansas boys, we don't have a lot of experience in the snow. So this is learning. I've, I've hunted every day that it snowed in my life to try to get more experience because I, I love it so much. But whenever you're stepping, whenever you're stepping, I don't pick my feet completely up and take a step in this snow. So what I'm doing let's see my feet, is I just kind of kick through the snow, shuffle through the snow. Kind of like if you're walking in, in a creek trying to be be quiet. Us Arkansas boys know how to walk in creeks. So I mean I'm hunting while I'm doing this too, so I'm, I'm being very cautious. Hunting with DMAP tags by the way if you're wondering why I'm hunting in February in Arkansas with a gun. So being real quiet just slipping through, playing the wind. Um, I'm not wearing a lot of clothes. You would think us Arkansas boys would be bundled up. If I was sitting on the deer stand, I would be. But I'm slipping, I'm walking. Um, it's about 33 degrees today, so it's the warmest day we've had. I've got a hand-me-down um, button-up shirt on. I've got a banded, you can see it, uh, Moreno wool hoodie base layer on. Fantastic. I got the base layer bottoms on as well. Moreno is so light and it's warm. And actually with this hood, I can I can wear the hood and still hear really well because it's thin. Keeps you cool when you're hot and warm when you're cold. It's the weirdest thing. So a pair of Goodwill pants and then like every tree Arkansan, my lacrosse boots. So and wool socks. Um other tip I have, I know this is getting long, it's just me talking. Hopefully I'll show you a deer in a minute. But me personally, and I just listened to a podcast 
from the hunting public, and I agree with him 100%. I've always been like this. I can never just, just never describe it in words. When I'm hunting, my hand is on my gun. You see that sling? I hate slings with a passion. I use it. I carry a sling with me all the time in case I need to put the gun on my shoulder to glass. But when I'm hunting, my gun is always in my hands. Uh, these are you know, elbow carry like that, cradle carry. Um, or I'm, I'm two-hand ready carry. It, it's always in my hands. When I'm in a deer stand, it's in my hands. I'm familiar with this with this shotgun because, I mean, the end result here, what we're trying to do is harvest a deer. So binoculars, clothing, all this other kind of stuff, boots, is not important if you don't pull off the shot. And you're going to get a very small opportunity, small window, quick window, to be able to shoot a deer. So my hand is always on my rifle, shotgun, whatever gun I'm hunting with, muzzleloader, doesn't matter. So that's that. Let's go do some other stuff. So, hope you're ready for another pro tip. I hate loud water bottles. So, what you can do if you have a good water bottle, like one of you buy from a store to drink water out of pre-filled with water is what I'm trying to say. Or one like this that is squeezable. Squeeze all that air out of it. Cap it off. So much quieter. There's your pro tip. And I wish there wasn't a chunk of ice in there. It's just, it froze overnight. So, back to hunting. So, I've got some deer spotted. Okay, so we've had success. Let me tell you what we've done. So, well, let me spin you around. Okay, you see the deer out there? So that's the one I stalked for 400 yards. So what I've done was backtrack, as you can see right here, I went from shadow to shadow behind each tree. I came down this creek right here. And where I first spot them, spotted them, that's all marsh. That's all frozen marsh. So I was just almost busting through every time. And I spotted them up there while I was in the pines and the cedars. Um, I glassed them. I saw them moving back down here. Now I think they were actually, I thought they were in this field um, when I saw them. And I really think they were right in this area. Um, so they weren't exactly where I thought they were, but that was a long, long, slow stalk. So let's go check it out. And there you have it. One more soybean eater down. A little bit more meat in the freezer. So 133 yard shot, I just ranged it. So I was over here, let me show you. As you can see my tracks, so my tracks lead me right back there. I took a knee and leaned up against a tree and shot this one. Good sized deer. On to the next job. As I'm walking back to the house, um, I just looked at my my app that was uh just the normal iphone health data app put in 3.2 miles for uh for that deer uh, there was at least three of them there together so about 7,000 steps for that one i really thought we weren't going to see one and that's this is all private land um the land that i'm hunting on right here he allows pretty much anybody to hunt so it's, it's kind of like hunting 
public land that people leave their deer stands on and there's a lot of hunting pressure. They are very spooky, very scary, and it, they're pretty hot, tough to hunt up here. So I'm just gonna give you that piece of information. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, I wish I could have got the deer on camera but before the shot and then during the shot, but hey, I don't have the gear to do that yet. I'm working on getting that gear and making that all happen, especially hunting by myself. Um, if you watch a lot of hunting shows, they will tell you that filming, self-filming is really difficult. So we got that one cleaned. Um, just to wrap it up, I think uh, my phone says I walked six miles a day after those deer total. Um, so good workout, good exercise, and enjoyed the woods. I, I made it. I did really slow. I went through the woods slow, glassed everything. Every time I popped over a ridge, used the wind to my advantage, and it paid off. Now, it took a long time for it to pay off. I mean, that I covered a lot of territory in my book, but, you know, if you're hunting out west, it wouldn't be. But just a snow day here in Arkansas, and, and we had some success. Shot a good-sized doe, filled another DMAP tag, and, hey, I'm, I'm happy. So... With that, please like, subscribe, share to your friends, and uh, keep making every toe push. Have a good one.